Kaylee Ellen is a gardening enthusiast and YouTube personality who has gained a large following for her informative and engaging videos on all things related to plants and gardening. One topic that she is particularly knowledgeable about is soil mix, and she has developed a recipe for the perfect soil mix that can help your plants thrive. In this introduction, we'll delve into Kaylee's expertise on soil mix and how it can benefit your gardening endeavors. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. So I'm gonna break down the ingredients I use, give a very brief description of you know why they're useful or why they're in there. And I will of course give you the recipe for my Aroid mix so you can mix it yourself. So a quick breakdown of what is in my mix. So to start off, we have good old orchid bark. You can buy this in a lot of places. You can actually buy this in a lot of pet shops or reptile shops. It's not too difficult to get a hold of and you can of course grab it on Amazon as well. So there's actually actually two pretty decent reasons why we use orchid bark. The first reason is aeration of the soil. So basically, think of it this way, the roots of our plants like to breathe just as much as we do, if that makes any sense. Not only that, I feel like a lot of people don't actually know this, but a chunkier mix of soil actually encourages a plant to grow. Plants in general are built to adapt to a certain degree. So what will happen is if you have a chunkier mixture, your plant will adapt and try and grow hardier roots around these chunks in the substrate. Also on the list, we have good old Koya, also known as Kwa. If you say it like I do, you can't stop me. That's how I want to pronounce it. Generally, when you get your Koya, the chunkier, the better. However, honestly, most often than not, you do find the finer mixes. So the mix I'm going to use is going to account for that. So why do we use Koya? Well, it degrades a lot slower than a potting mix does. And it also stays a little bit drier than a potting mix does. If I had, you know, a cheeky little bit of potting mix in a plant pot or whatever and I tried to rinse it through with water you know let it drain and come back to the soil even if I came back an hour later you'd be left with the best way I can describe it guys is sludge and that is going to kill your aroid faster than anything is sludge we do not want sludge so I do not recommend potting mix for that reason so we use Koya it is much slower to break down and it generally stays a little bit drier than potting mix we still use it for moisture should we say but it's a little bit more of a controlled level of moisture than what potting mix would be we also have perlite which i personally do not like however i do use it because well the plants need it but we use perlite generally speaking for moisture control and a little bit of drainage as well so the next ingredient that i use in my mix is activated charcoal now basically activated charcoal is going to be the filter for our soil it is going to filter out the impurities Generally, the charcoal I use in this video is a little bit too fine, so if you can get a chunkier charcoal than what I'm using, go for it. And my last ingredient is my natural fertilizer that I use, and that is none other than worm castings. And when I say castings, I mean poop. It is worm poop. Now you understand what each ingredient is and what it does, we can now build our potting mix. We get some good aeration in there and the encouragement of meatier roots. We then have 20% of coir, making sure that it's not, you know, too moist and not not moist enough so there's just enough to hold that moisture that we need in the soil following that with 25 percent perlite so we make sure that we get really good drainage to balance out that coir in there and at 10 percent we have charcoal our filter for our soil last but not least our natural fertilizer which are worm castings at 10 percent so to make this mix i usually put all the ingredients into a bowl and mix them around now i am wearing blue gloves Literally, there is zero reason for that. It's just much easier to do this when I'm filming, you know, if I have to touch cameras or whatever. First thing we put in is our 25% orchid bark, straight in with coir at 20%. Following that with perlite at 25%, so it matches the level of the orchid bark. Then we have our 10% charcoal. Again, if you can find a more coarse mix, go for it. And last but not least, our 10% worm castings. So now that we have our mix in our lovely big bowl, we just take a lovely spoon and we just churn that up to get a good mix so the mix is all worked through and everything is balanced. So here is the final product, our made up mixture. This is what my Aroid mix generally looks like. Yes, it is very chunky. Yes, there is a lot of perlite, but honestly, for Aroids, this is needed. It is very, very important. 
You can see there huge chunks of orchid bark. You can't really see the coir or the worm castings, but of course you can definitely see the perlite. Maybe a keen eye among you can see some of the pieces of charcoal as well. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep you updated for more of our videos. Have a great day.